Tapped in exclusive. We are the internet, bitch. This is Rio, and you're tapped in. Tapped in. Today we're here with a, a true, true fucking great person and a good producer, Rio. Uh, excellent, man. Excellent. Uh, excellent producer, for sure. Uh, let's just, let's like, because I, I really wanted to have like, we are kind of talking about this <laughs> before we started, like a Rio expose. Like yeah. where you can kind of like dive into who you are. So like, first of all, where are you originally from? Like, where were you born? I was born in San Francisco. Fuck it. Well, where, where in San Fran? Uh, it was like Palo Alto. Okay, um, fire. But then pretty early on, we moved to like super rural Northern California. Like oh, uh, over by this town, <laughs> Fort Bragg. Okay. But not the bigger Fort Bragg. You know, it's like a little one in California. Yeah. Um, it's like over by the coast. Uh, like Mendocino County. Is it up? Is it up from uh, Half Moon Bay? Yeah. Okay. My uncle lives in Half Moon. Wow. Bay. Yeah, that's Look fucking that. sick. But uh, it was, it was cool being there. My parents were really young when they had me. They're like nineteen. Oh damn. And they okay. were like, we were we were out in the wilderness basically, <laughs> right? But not in like a religious way, in like a hippie way, if that right. makes sense. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, shout out to the to the Mormon people though. They're cool, but it was in like a we were doing similar things to them. Right. But it was just for a different reason. You know, we were like right. grinding our own flour and stuff. Holy shit. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So but. like, um, just to get like a, a visual, mm -hmm. right. So was it like cabin type shit or was it more like farm type shit? Like, um, do you get what I'm saying? It was more like we had a, a meadow. We were, we were staying with my grandparents. So it was like, oh, it was sick. a normal house. Yeah. But the nearest town was like five miles away. It was very like, I could just like run off and run into the forest and just enjoy. Yeah. How, how important do you think that is? I feel like <laughs> it, it was really special having time like that. Cause yeah. I mean, now I just sit inside all day and make beats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like, it's good that yeah. I got, to, I, th I feel like I got all my nature time out of, out of the way, at least for now, right. you know, do um, you, that's, that's actually probably a good question for later, but like your relationship with nature like what is it like like i feel like we were pretty close but we haven't seen each other in a while <laughs> you drifted yeah but like whenever we see each other it's like cool it's, you know yeah. i'll chop it up i'll go out there but um i do miss being in portland because there's so many trees because that's where i moved when i was Crazy. like eight and I, I lived there for like 10 years wow um and i do miss the nature but i mean here they got fake nature they have like True. trees where you know that they just like put it there We're on planted. purpose yeah <laughs> they even have fake trees yeah um, they put fake trees it's crazy yeah. but i don't know nature is cool though shout out nature if you're watching this shout out nature yeah um all right so first 10 years now let me ask you to go back to that so mm -hmm. did you grow up around computers and making beats and shit or like how do you know what i'm saying like what were you doing during that pivotal outdoor time right like I was like, I was pretty sheltered. Like I wasn't, Damn. I wasn't ex exposed to like the internet or anything until I was like, at like 11 or 12. Damn. I didn't have a phone or anything, which I feel like it was good for me. That's so good, dude. And I, I was homeschooled. <laughs> so I, I like, I just kind of got to like do whatever I wanted. Yeah. But not in a like, I'm 10 and I'm going to do whatever I want. So I'm going to just play video games all day. You know, like I right. had to be doing stuff that was productive. Yeah. So, um, any like painting or art, like any art sometimes. Stuff? Yeah. I like, I like painting, but I'm really bad at it. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I can't draw a straight line. But I, like, I do like stick figures type shit. <laughs> it's, it's still fun. I remember yeah. when I was younger, I would always have something that I was really passionate about. Like, right. even if it was some bullshit, like there was a while where I was like making, web comics and then i was like making oh, stop shit. motion stuff and then you did stop motion yeah bro That's i had like all these sick. bionicles and i was like <laughs> moving them around and doing stop motion like dude that's creative as fuck yeah i, I feel that's like i've crazy. always just something is weird with my brain i get like really obsessed with stuff yeah yeah like fixated and yeah like on some like yeah, I probably got a little bit of the, the tism in me. You know? Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Yeah, for like, sure. but it helps because I, I just get so hyper focused on stuff. It's uh, it's productive. Yeah, it's not like for nothing. Yeah, you know, you're like you get fixate, you'll do that shit, and you're like, damn, I fucking crushed that. You know? Yeah, that's sick, dude. So like, that must have been like having that experience for that initial ten years or whatever. You know, like you have nature. You're not 
fucking dealing with social media at six years old. You know what I'm saying? Like kids these days get a IG when they're born, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, their dog gets an IG. Yeah. They're fucking, you know, like you didn't have to deal with any of that shit. Yeah. And you think it really like helped. Yeah. Like I, th- it, I think it did just cause like, I mean, now where I go on my phone so much, <laughs> I don't like computer. It's, it's not ideal, but like <laughs> at least I got some time where it wasn't, it wasn't like that. And I feel like as I get older, like when I, don't have to be as online. Like, yeah. bro, I'm just about to like, I feel like when I'm older, I'm going to be one of those people where they like, don't have a smartphone. Yeah. Yeah. And they, I mean, I'll have green text. <laughs> that kind of sucks. But, Dog. Like, <laughs> but I, I just, I, I don't know. Get... <laughs> I only do it because it's like part of pursuing my career. Yes. Like, I don't need it. Where you can ask him after the show, like how many times I've done that. Like I've had a flip phone. Yeah. I've had a fucking Blackberry, like, in 2021 like mm-hmm. so i can just like text people make phone calls shit like that but it's like that's the thing like you said it's part of the like business aspect yeah. of this shit so you can't you're tethered to it almost yeah you know but being able to get away from it you know and like have the self-control to just like have fun without that shit is super important Facts. i it's feel like, like a lot of people like i have friends where their screen time is like 14 hours a day oh jesus it's crazy Bro. But I, I think that... <laughs> That's so bad, dude. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like in like 50 years, they're just going to like... Not even that, like less. They're just going to be like, well... Like five everyone, years. <laughs> everyone who was on their phones and was doing all this shit, their eyes are just fucked now. Or something. Yeah. Cause like we don't yeah. even have like studies on like what that does to people. Right. Like we don't have people who are 100 who looked at their phone their whole life. Dude, it's brand new. Yeah. So how are you supposed... To, it's crazy. And people don't really, that's the, that's the other thing is people don't care. Yeah. There's certain people, you, your family. I, like, mean, I can you know say that I care, but I still go. You still life. do it. Yeah. I know. But that's the thing is you, you're cognizant of yeah. it. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't, they're just like, who can't, who gives a fuck? Like they don't have, they have this like, fuck it attitude. Like I'm still being dumb, but I'm like aware that I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're aware that it's not a healthy It's like, how I feel like, like how long ago they didn't know that like, alcohol and cigarettes were even bad for you. Right. They're like, but this then is later fucking they're great. like, Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. It wasn't until like maybe 50 years later. Like, dude, this shit's horrible. Yeah. That's great. And it's also oddly enough, the legal shit. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like approved by the government. Weird, Cause taxed sold. Well, we'll go full circle back to like origin, <laughs> Rio origin stuff. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> like when I was younger, I was like never around alcohol at all. And like my parents, like they like, I I know a lot of people have to be around that, but like for me, like I wasn't. So when I came out to LA and I was around it, (laughs) like it was good because like, even if like, yeah, I've had times where I get drunk. Like I, I can't just like become someone who drinks all the time right? because growing up, it was like not normal. Yeah. I feel like that happens to people because they're around stuff and they're like, oh, this is normal. Yeah. And then they grow up and it's like, they don't think that it's weird. Right. Because it's so, it's normalized. Yeah. So like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Back. You're supposed to get hammered all the time. Yeah. That's not, that's not a good thing, yeah. you know? So like, I guess, so you're 10 years old, you leave, you guys go to Portland, you said. Mm-hmm. So what was that? I just went to Portland. Yeah. Like last summer. And I thought it was sick. They had great food, all that shit. But like, what was your Portland experience? I mean, like, what was I was, it like? And were you homeschooled in Portland or did you go? Yeah, I, I was homeschooled. I mean, I went to, I went to community college for like two years when I was 15. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Cool. Yeah. In Portland? Yeah. What was that experience? PCC. It, it was cool. But overall, like being in Portland, it's like, because I was sheltered, but it was in like a nurturing and loving way. It's not like I was sheltered and I like hated it. I was just posted, dude. I didn't yeah. like, think anything of it. So yeah. like my experience of Portland, it was really good, but my perspective on it is also very much like the perspective of like a kid, you know? Yeah. Like I don't know what you're gonna go out and do in Portland. <laughs> but it was it was cool. I like yeah, it. It's just, very slow there. Though. You were I, growing up there. Yeah. Did you get to do um God, what is that? The Rose Gardens? Did you ever go over there? Yeah. Like outside and then there's the what is that thing above? It's like a Japanese garden. Yeah, I like it. There. That shit's sick. There's like cool, all that nature. Yeah, so shit much. Is and really you cool. can go to Salvi's Island and you can yeah. berries and stuff. Like. That, it's, that's a good way to say it. You said it's slower. 
it's like a slower pace. Yeah. It's a more like chill, mellow. You know? That's why like I was in New York for like a oh, month that's the opposite, earlier yeah. this year. Yeah. <laughs> I was working on shit with Tekka and it was really fun. Yeah. But bro, I can't like be somewhere that busy for that long. Yeah, it, like it would be like 4 a.m. You just hear cars and like I started feeling crazy, bro. Cause <laughs> I was just in my hotel for a month. Like, fuck, I can't, I can tolerate, I can tolerate LA, but like it's only kind of home. Like uh, at right. some point I got to go somewhere and just, you know, that video of Tyler, the creator where he's cooking up and he's like, yeah. in some like beautiful nature, bro. Like I'm trying to be there. Yeah. 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 That's like a good, like end game. Type yeah. Show. Like, all right build and then go out there um okay so in portland mm -hmm. were you like musically inclined were you listening to music like what like because you started getting internet access by you said 11 yeah 11 12, or 12 yeah something like that so are you listening to music on like what like how does that happen Man, I, I remember for like the first like 10 years of my life i only listened to like music that my parents played <laughs> that's fine and then finally when i got it was funny i it, it's a long story but i even though i was homeschooled i went to some like classes still there were like a, it was like a homeschool co-op where like right all the homeschool moms are like our kids are still having classes but it's not right. at school and there was a gym class where if you kicked a kickball all the way across during a kickball game and it went in the hoop on the other side because yeah. it was like a basketball court yeah you would win like four hundred dollars Cause he was like, no one's gonna do it. That's fucking sick. And I won the money because during a <laughs> kickball game, we had one once every week. I, yeah, and it went in the hoop, like from under one hoop to into the, the other? other during a kickball game with your fucking foot. Yeah, dude, that's insane. But with the money, <laughs> I bought an iPod. Oh, like my friend, I had my friend buy an iPod for me, so I had. That's why I had internet access. Oh, so I wasn't shit. supposed to. Dude, that's fucking legendary. Yeah. So you were just like, yo, here's 400. Yeah, I was just like, I would hide under my covers Get me on online. my iPod. Yeah. I hear my mom coming in and I have to like hide it. <laughs> so did you like, okay, so when you got that, were you like on YouTube? Like, what were you, what were you doing? I remember it was crazy. Like, imagine you just got, you're like day one on earth. You're an alien. Yeah. You can just listen to like anything and do anything, right. you know, like, cause I was sheltered in that way. Yeah. Like, it was really exciting just listening <laughs> to music. I, feel, I remember. Do you remember what, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you remember yeah. the first like song or I what? remember <laughs> I heard it was some, it was some shit that DJ Mustard did, bro. I liked, I liked fucking Kid Ink and people like Fire. that, bro. Fire, shout Kid Ink. <laughs> That's hard. So you were listening to that shit. And yeah. then at what point, like, when did you actually start like, taking like producing suit or like do you know what i'm saying like yeah. when how did that was it at pcc or like when where was it i remember i was on a family trip okay um and i didn't have my i didn't have a laptop or anything i just had my phone and yeah. i saw an internet money video in my recommended <laughs> it was like some tutorial that nick did oh um, like shout how to out make beats. Yeah, yeah. and i watched that and i was like dang this seems cool i want to make beats Cause when I was younger, I had tried to make beats on my iPod using GarageBand. Right. But like I gave up cause they were like really bad. It was on your iPod too. Yeah. Man. That's fucking hard. Um, but then like, well, I was, yeah, I was like 15 and I, I was like right before my 15th birthday, I watched that tutorial and then I, w the whole time I was gone, I kept watching tutorials Damn. for like three weeks cause we were gone. And then I got back and I downloaded FL. Oh, no. you on a, on my a mom's computer, yeah. Oh shit! I did get a computer soon after that. Yeah. Um. So the first one though was on your mom's. Yeah. Was she like, "What the fuck?" Like, what uh, is they were, this? They, my parents are always like super supportive of stuff. That's so cool. Because they're they're young, you know. Right. Like, since they since get they it. They were nineteen when they had me. Like they aren't yeah. like. They're not lame. Those new yeah. kids <laughs> in their iPod, you know, like. <laughs> They, they they they, they, they obviously uh, had a lot of love for you. Yeah, you know, because they, they they wanted to give you that uh, that healthy experience. Nice. You know what I mean. So that's really sick. I feel like it would have been hard for someone though to have my experience if they weren't so passionate about things. Right. Because like, even though I had friends, like yeah. I didn't go to school in the traditional way. You know, even though I had some classes, like yeah, I, I didn't. 
Like, I feel like there's things that happen to people normally when they're a kid where it's like, yeah, you're a teenager, and then someone's like, yo, you want to smoke? Look, we got weed. You want to try this? Or like, you know, things like that. And it's yeah. like, bro, I, I came to LA when I was 17, and I had, like, not had yeah. those experiences, you know? But yeah. I was just so passionate about stuff that I didn't, I didn't, didn't care. Yeah. It was like, fine. Yeah. I feel like if you had no passion for stuff, though, you'd probably be pissed. You'd, you'd go, go crazy. Dude, I can't do anything. Yeah. Oh, that's a good... I didn't actually think of it that way. Yeah. I thought of the pros, not necessarily yeah. the cons. You know what I mean? But that's crazy. So you so in so so you start playing around with FL yeah. on your mom's shit, right? Um, then you get a laptop. So when do you end up like making beats and you're like, I gotta go to LA? Like I have to like what? Get, walk me through that. I remember with going to LA, it kind of just happened because I already I got some songs. Like pretty early on, I realized that there weren't that many loop makers at the time. Okay. There weren't that many people who were like making melodies and sending them out. Okay. So I just like made an Instagram and I would just post like dumb ass shit on there. Like I would just like, <laughs> I would like, I would make like fake lean. Like I would get like <laughs> Sprite and then pour like weird candy into it and shit. And like, yeah, just cause like to fuck around. Yeah. Cause yeah. I knew that like, if I put a face behind my music that it would like, resonate more right and i just dm'd like 50 people every day and i'd be like holy shit yo let me send loops yo let me send loops and then copy and paste like yeah just and then i just start getting songs off of it like within probably like a year and a half of starting producing off the 50 dms a day yeah i mean Dog. you shouldn't do that to the people yeah, there, like, i was like is that a good advice no or? it's not because <laughs> especially now everyone does that yeah so the best way to network is like develop real connections with like a few people. Got you. But back then there weren't that many. So. Right. So it was hard to it, kind it of get that. It worked back then. Yeah. Um, and then. <laughs> so this is while you're in Portland. Yeah. And okay. I was, it was funny. I was like getting songs with people and I even like, I started like making money off of music, but I was still, I was also going to PCC for music at the same time. <laughs> right. And like, it was weird because there'd be kids in classes who would like, talk about internet money and like eventually i got signed right and then that's why i dropped out is because i was like bro i can't be seen here they're gonna like <laughs> oh notice my god me. that's crazy so you actually got out of there because of that yeah that's hilarious and so you left and then ended up coming to la yeah because i remember i got this little got in a little keyed song brotherly love yes shout out which, that's a great song dude Shout out 1050. He's the other producer on it. He he found me from I forget. He found me from some person on Twitter shouting me out or something. But wow. I sent him a bunch of loops and he he got me that. And then I also had like a also RIP a Tekka keyed. song. Facts. Yeah. Bro. Man, I remember the last like one of the last sessions I had with him too, bro. Like that shit is just sad. Super sad. Crazy. Thanks. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? We were talking about like how that was one of the first. Yeah, the songs I got. Yeah, I got a Tekka song and I got a Lil Mosey song. Oh, shut up. That's fire, yeah. Um, off of that, Taz just found me. Just off those? Yeah. So that's I had all the songs so come he out. He found you and hit you up. Yeah, and he was, was like, like Let's he was this. like, yo, it's time. That Damn. was his first DM, and I was like, bet. And then I signed the next day, and I went to L.A. like two days after that. <laughs> Bro, and shout out my parents. Yeah, they didn't even say, like, wait, know who Taz was. What did your parents, yeah, what, were your parents like, dope, okay. Yeah. That was it. And yeah. are they in? Are they still in Portland? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's good. Do you have siblings? Yeah, I have one. I have a younger brother. Oh, okay. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. I was going to say, like, are is there someone else that was like in the house, maybe making music and shit, but did your, is your brother anything like you or is he super different? In some ways we're like very different, but does he have the passion thing? Like, where yeah, he, gets he does. He, he also makes music too, which is fire. But, no way. But it's shout like, out, bro. shout yeah, out. Yeah. But he also <laughs> wants it to be like separate from the stuff I'm, you know, like, right, right, right. He wants his own. He has his whole own vision for all the shit he wants to do, which that's like, sick. That's super, that's super respectful. That's awesome. I feel like he is like, 
I don't know. He he's similar to me, but he's also like way cooler than me, honestly. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to little bro, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. So parents are still in Portland. You fucking ship up to LA. Yeah. And you just you hop on a plane or something? Like what do you Yeah, I got I got a plane. I went there and I was so awkward at first because I, I was like even though I can be social, like then I was like very introverted. Right. You didn't um, want to like fucking socialize. Yeah. And it, it's funny because I went out there, I signed with internet money and then COVID happened because I signed in like 20, like at the end of 2019. Holy so shit. So I was going back and forth. Yeah. And then I dropped out of community college because I was like, dude, I'm already like two years ahead on school. Like I can dip now from school and go back and still be if ahead. You, yeah. If you wanted to, you could do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but then I was in LA and then it was lockdown. So then I was just stuck there. So I didn't see my family for like almost a year. Oh no. But that made me grow so much as a person. Oh my God. Like imagine like being in your show and like, yeah, I was just used to being around my family. Yeah. And then being out in LA with a bunch of other like guys around my age, just working on music. Like I feel like it, it's like two different paths. Like if I didn't do that, then I would just like be a totally different person. Fuck it made yeah. me have to like grow and come out of my shell yeah. like so much. It was really integral to your growth. Yeah. If you didn't have that moment, you could have gone a whole other way. Thanks. That's fucking sick, man. That's cr- that's a that's what I'm saying. It's a wild. That's a huge part of your story, right? Yeah. Like where you come from, getting to where you are, how you got here, type shit. You know what I mean? Like Thanks. that's a crazy part of your story. Now, now they know. Yeah, well, we'll dive into it more. I want to do the tapped in wheel with you real quick. Yeah, that's like super necessary. I've heard good things about this. <laughs> yeah, so you get three spins. Um, we have a bunch of different options on here. Gabe, is that good for the camera? All right, good. All so right. give it three spins. It's kind of like a game show type thing. So let's see what happens. What do you mean three spins? So spin it once, and then we'll Dude. see what it lands on. Okay. You'll get three in total. I'm just trying to do it right, you know. Yes, sir. You can give it a better spin. There you go. Oh. Oh shit. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Truth or shot? Truth or shot? Okay. So you don't have to necessarily take a shot. You could just take a shot of water, whatever you want. Um, but it says here That oh. was the most scuffed spin of all time. <laughs> that? that was pretty sick. Yeah. Caught on here? Do you want you can spin it again if you want. I feel like it's my destiny. Alright. So you got Oh, this is fucking <laughs> this is a crazy one. Alright, so who has the weakest beats that you know personally? Now, if you don't want to answer, all right, you could take a shot of water. That's scary. I don't know if I want to take a shot of water. You know, it's looking a little rough over here. Yes, mm. I mean, it's it's up to you. You know, I'm gonna say drum roll, or that you don't know. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. That's Does true. that make sense? It could be. It yeah, could be someone you don't know that personally. Makes sense. Where you're like, hmm, these are weak. Or like, maybe repetitive? What's the right word? Uh, I don't I don't know. I'm trying to think. I feel like, and, and I'll, I'll show you afterwards. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll show them a snippet, okay? It's it's me in the past. Oh, yeah. shit. So this is like it. past Rio. Yeah, this is like when I was making stuff on past, Garage Brand. Past Rio has the weakest beats. Yes. Wow. See, you I know can't what? do anyone dirty like, and I couldn't think of anyone. Do all my friends off the top talented. of your head? Yeah, they're like hella can, talented. Yeah. Um. All right, let me let me play something. You guys ready? Yeah. It's gonna be real high quality through the mic. I can't wait. Yep. All right, let's get it, boys. <laughs> you feel me? Why is this kind of hard though? It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Why do I think like this is a little bit, dude? <laughs> it's choppy, but it's kind of hard though. <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> Those sounds are crazy. <laughs> Those sounds are like yes. I feel like I'm in an aquarium. I do. I feel like I'm in an aquarium too. All right, <laughs> that was great. I won. <laughs> All right, get another spin. Yes. I'm <laughs> Let's gonna, see what happens. Roll up my sleeves. <laughs> Let's see. Cap or no cap? Oh. All right. What is this segment? Okay, so I'm going to tell you a statement. Mm-hmm. And if you think it's 
not true, we're gonna go cap. And if you think it's true, we'll go no cap. All right. Um, and you can hit the cap button. So if you think Wait, it's so. so hit tap it. Yeah. There you go. So that's oh. if you think it's cap. If it's no cap, you just say no cap. Okay. All right. You don't have like a no cap button? No, but we should make one. That's a good point. Um, you should make a, I have an idea for a segment. Cap and no cap buttons. I have an idea, you know, yeah. those TikToks where they press all the different sounds on the soundboard? Yes. Make a segment where you make a physical soundboard oh. and you tell them a statement and they react to it and spam the buttons. Producer's taking notes right now. That's right, fucking amazing. It. All right. So do you think today, currently in today's fucking musical landscape or whatever, mm -hmm. producers are actually taking over and artists are kind of lacking? I think that's cap or no cap. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm cap. cap. I think that the state that music is in, it's equally like there's some stuff that's stale and there's some stuff that's good. Right. The stale stuff, it's equally on producers and artists. We just gotta go Damn. crazy. Damn. Okay. Okay. And there's also a bunch of crazy stuff. I feel like we're yeah. always saying that everyone's falling off and everything's yeah, like yeah, right. music is so stale, but like we always say that. It's an average hot take. Yeah. Right. Like that's like the thing. Like everyone would just say like, "Oh, 2017." Right. But it's like, dude, we're just nostalgic because we were like kids. That's the same thing where like people in their 40s are like, "Yo, the 90s hip hop." Yeah. Bro. Like it's like okay. Like everyone will say that like, about. Uh, it's sure. about What was going on in your life then? Right. Right. That, you were probably having a good ass time then. Yeah. Yeah. And where you're at now and how you feel. Yeah. Right? It's all relevant. Yeah. Um. All right. That's fire. Give me another spin. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, okay. Video reaction. Video reaction. Let's look up at the big screen. <laughs> Let's see what he got. What he got lined up. Let's I'm ready. See. Video reaction. Lex Luger beats. FL Studio Trap remake. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, shout out Lex Luger, dude. I feel like they shot this on a phone. For sure. This was 11 years ago? Damn. He was going crazy. <laughs> Look at that laptop, though. Okay. Let's see where it goes. Why does the laptop look so Damn, short? Damn, this shit's so old. Holy shit. Is it really? Is it more than 11 years, right? I, yeah. I, I don't know. Oh, shit. There's smoke now. It's getting real serious. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. Dude, they're getting no. into it. He's ascending right now. Damn. <laughs> and I feel like it was probably so fun back then because now everyone can get all the cool sounds and VSTs. But like back right. then, you had to like search for everything. Right. Like your friend probably had to give you the spins eight away. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> That's so true. Oh shit. Beats probably still valid today. Probably. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. Shout out Lex Luger, man. Facts. An absolute legend, dude. Some of the old, like, fucking Rick Ross shit that he did was crazy. Facts. His beats were amazing, man. I feel like. Shout out to him. He's one of the reasons why, like, a lot of the shit he did, you still hear it in so much of what's going on now. Just, like, all the trap shit. Yeah. That's true. Oh my god. They were going crazy. This though. is the secret formula here. Wow. Holy shit. Oh no. I didn't learn any secrets, but I like it. Yeah. They were going crazy. I can see there's like a small blunt. I guess that's like That's the secret. That's a secret, right? He had a Carl's Jr. cup, I think. I th that is the secret. That Carl's Jr. and a small like Swisher blunt. Yeah, that's yeah. That looks sounds good. like a smoke. Sounds flying. like a night. <laughs> that's amazing. That doesn't sound like a night. That doesn't sound like a night. It sounds awful. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it is a Carl's. That's what I thought it yeah. was. Um, I mean, they got friends there. It's fine. Okay. But I just mean like if I was alone and that. Gucci jacket. Oh, shit. Gucci jacket. Okay. That's kind of. That's pretty, you know. Producers, take notes. Yeah. These are the tips and tricks right here. Yeah. I like this. Ciroc. Okay. Shout out Ciroc. Um, yeah. Okay. So I got to get into like, you saw the formula. How do you feel about people that like, do you feel like 
making beats sober is like an important thing. I feel like if you saw that room <laughs> and if you see most studios, like people yeah. are smoking, fucking fucked up, all that stuff, right? Like, what's your take on that? Like, how do you feel about making beats? I feel like, well, like lately and in the past, I'd say like year, I, I don't know. I like, I like making stuff sober. Yeah. But, I mean, you can have fun. And if you're with your friends, you have fuck it, dude. Sure. And some people just smoke all day. And if you're someone <laughs> yeah, who smokes all reality. day, like yeah. some people are just like that and they're happier <laughs> that way. And right. I'm proud of you. you yeah, know? sure. But for me, I overthink more if I'm high. Yeah. I, I don't Holy know. It's just shit. not the vibe. Yeah. And it gives me like kind of anxiety in a yeah. weird way. And like if I. It like if induces I'm, stress. <laughs> yeah. And if I make beats when I'm drunk, yeah. I'm going to like overthink way less. But then the next day I'm going to listen and I'm going to be like, this is not good because I wasn't thinking. Yeah. Which makes sense. But I feel like sometimes it's this illusion of like, because you're fucked up, you think what you're making is it's better. Good. Yeah. So then you think that you have to keep doing it to make good stuff when really like, it's just that in the moment you might be vibing more. Right. But it's like you're if you're sober, you have to make something better for you to really fuck with it. Right. So maybe, maybe that's better. But at the end of the day, I know so many producers and all of them are different. So like, yeah, that's how I feel about it. But like, yeah, you do you. Also. Everybody's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it comes down to, you know, everybody's process is different, Thanks. but that's great. And I think like what, like, that's, uh, so you come out here, LA, mm -hmm. you have, obviously there's some shock cause you hadn't been exposed to all the LA yeah. shit. Um, at what point do you start linking up with like Yachty and stuff like that? How did that come together? I remember we had the studio record plant booked like shout out record every plant, yeah. every day for like uh i don't know maybe like six months or something Damn. like all the internet money people and um i really know how but like taz and yadi knew each other um oh, not okay. that they worked on like a bunch of stuff but they like talk sometimes so um They're like mutual yeah friends. and so uh yadi pulled up to the studio and we, we had like a couple weeks where we were just walking in and I was working on a lot of it. And just from the beginning, like we just got along really well. You just kind of like hit it off. Yeah. Like That's I feel cool. like we're, we're similar in that we just like making cool shit and not, <laughs> not caring too much about it. Just being like, fuck yeah. I mean, and, right. And the last shit Yachty dropped kind of the opposite. He put a lot of effort into that. Oh, crazy. That shit is beautiful. Yeah. It's a great project. But. I, I just appreciate that. Like, you know, like, yeah. like we can just pull up to the stew and just kick it. And right. we might make something. We might play 2K. We might whatever. But yeah. I don't know, he's one of my, my closest artist friends, I feel like. That's, you know what? I feel I've never, we've crossed paths with a lot of people that are friends with him. Mm -hmm. People that have worked with him. And yeah. nobody's ever really ever had a bad thing to say about him. Right, so he's, just so, a, he's just a super genuine dude. That's, also. yeah. He seems really genuine and, um, like uh, clear with his intentions yeah he's not like fucking well because like if you're in that position like you don't have to put people on and help them right you know right but like for instance like he helped produce on the drake record that i got like he made wow. that happen and holy like, shit that's and crazy shit like that you know where it's like i just appreciate people who do things not just based off of like their own game but also what, just like you're I, cool what can know? i get out of this yeah because right. i get it. people have to think like that sometimes right i have to think like that sometimes right but when things can be genuine i feel like it's really special it's best yeah yeah that makes sense it's also like it's kind of that um relationship building thing right because if you're if you're honest and being true with your intentions and shit and you're not just doing shit like favor for favor yeah. or whatever um it just works out better like long term and the best music comes from when you're like i feel like the best music comes from when you're not doing it based off of like oh i'm gonna like make money off of this or this is gonna come out right but just off of like like i love the process of making music so much more than i love the results <laughs> more than like the end songs come product, out and yeah. when like that shit happens it's like cool but i'm so much happier when i'm just like making stuff. putting it together yeah yeah it's like that part is my addition to it. And once sign comes out, I'm like, well, I already had fun making it. So right. at this point, like it's done. Yeah. It's not like you're out performing it. 
yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you made the beat and now it's something else. Actually, you know? it is, there are moments where it's like really satisfying. Like if I go to a concert and I hear something I produce. That's fire. That, yeah, it's fire. That's super but fire. I don't know. Overall, I'm just, I try to just be in the moment. And once some shit happens, I just try to forget about it and <laughs> get something else cool happening. Cause like, that's fucking too many sick. people just like dwell on like back in back 12 years ago, I produced this song for, for Joe Biden. And it's like, they're <laughs> yeah. just like, you're like, okay, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's fire. Be proud of your accomplishments, but also like, yeah, I have too much shit to do to be that proud of my accomplishments. Like right. doing like new shit too. You're ready to move on yeah. and make more shit. It's 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 on to the next kind of thing. Yeah, that next me that mentality. Someday though, when I'm like done producing for artists, and I'm just like chilling. Yeah, then I'll get all my plaques because I haven't even like ordered any of them. Really? I ordered one because me and my friend Noah did a Young Boy song. Okay, and that's so I fire. ordered it because I ordered his too. Okay, so you did it at the same time. Yeah, because I'm like, bro, I'm ordered like I'm helping him get the plaque. I'm gonna get it. But even that, that's just at my mom's house. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't need fire. a reminder of it because I, I see so many super successful people just like get complacent because they're like, yeah, I already did all this yeah. shit. I'm, like, look at my trophies. I'm yeah, down. I'm blah, blah, blah. What do you mean? You know, and like, I never want to. I'm wanted, good. Like, being in LA and being surrounded by people who do entertainment stuff, like, I feel like it's so easy to get like that. Of course. I, I don't, I don't want to be like that. You want to stay hungry. Yeah. And keep. Keep making shit. Facts. So what? So you mentioned the Yachty Drake or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like what? How? What's that? Like expand on that. I remember. That's a crazy. I like, went. I went to Atlanta in like what was it? it was like last summer or fall or something. Okay. It was maybe it's like August. Or okay. Something. Yeah. And must have um, been hot as fuck. I hung out. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. <laughs> Atlanta in the summer. <laughs> it's I, I all hung, sticky and. <laughs> I hung out with Yachty. A couple times, and we were just kicking it. We didn't really make that much music. Um, I was just, I was also filming a bunch of YouTube videos there. Okay. Um, but then, like, on one of the last nights I was there, we got in, and we just made that song for fun. Just I just, I just made, fucked around. made the beat, and I used this loop from my boy Dez. And Shout then, out, Dez. Um, I pulled up on Yachty, and I played it for him, and then... He fucked with the beat too, cause like we had to make it more simple. But, um, yeah, then, you know, you can hear his ad libs in it. Yeah, on the song, so you know, <laughs> you help with that. But then he got to Drake, and that that was kind of crazy. That was like one of the only moments in the last like two years where I was like, I like, normally I'm very like calm about things, but when. Dude, if you find out you have a Drake song, like... <laughs> you flipped. You're like, yeah. what? <laughs> That's crazy. Because I went to, back to LA. I didn't know. It's not like I met Drake. Like, no, we, no, right. We worked right, on right. it, and then and he, came home. he got it to to Drake, and then... How did you find out? Yachty FaceTimed me, and he just played it for me. Shut the fuck up. He was like, yo, up. listen to this. <laughs> and I, like, <laughs> I don't know. It reminded me, like, when I got my first placement. I got a placement with... Who was it? I got placement with Cap G. Shout out with Cap the, G. my first placement, dude. Wow. It didn't even come out. It was just the snippet you of it. You just had it. Yeah. It was like a shitty video at the studio. <laughs> it was like recorded on like a Yeah. Whatever they were recording on. Yeah, no, it was worse. Yeah. Holy <laughs> Probably on like shit. your old phone. It was yeah, on the flip phone, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember when I got that. I was I was still fifteen, I think, when I got that song. I was just running around <laughs> my bedroom. I was like, it's oh. like that's how you felt. Like, yeah. And like damn. I felt like that. And that, yeah. that was just cool. Cause that's a fucking priceless feeling. Yeah. Right? Cause now like I feel awesome when I make music. Yeah. But like if I, if right now I get a text and I'm like, Oh shit, I got a song with this person. Like it takes a lot to like, <laughs> well, nothing's going to compare to that. Yeah. That's a crazy moment. It is. I think, I think about it this way. I'll give you like perspective. Yeah. Right? So like how many producers do you think exist in the world? Like, just think about Total? that number. Yeah. Um, it's got to be a, a good I'm amount. Good. I feel like probably like maybe like, I don't know, let's say like 14 million. Sure. Maybe more. I mean, sure. they're EDM people. I mean, like, what about like rap producers? Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. Let's say like 8 million. Sure. Okay. Let's say it's 8 million. Yeah. You're the one. 
that, well, I'm one of them. No, no, but I'm saying you're the one that got that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like that moment where it's like little Yachty's FaceTiming, like, yo, here yeah. you go. that was you. That's crazy. Huh. That's a really like wild. That is kind of crazy. I never, I didn't. Does that make that, sense? Like, yeah. I'm just, just to put like perspective. Yeah. And for people that are listening and watching, that is a whole other, like, you know what I mean? It's like all your work from the beginning, from mm -hmm. the fucking being fixated on shit, tinkering, <laughs> tinkering with shit, kicking the fucking ball and hitting it and, the, Dude, and get, get it the That's iPod. still the best moment of my life. That It's like that and Drake. Like it's close, you know, it's like kicking they're, the they're ball. They're probably even. Because imagine being 10 <laughs> yeah. and they're all these kids who you're friends Full with. Full court. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That shit was fucking I insane. actually still think that's the most impressive thing you've yeah, done. Yeah, it is. It's the most impressive thing I've done, bro. My life is downhill since then. That's Dude. gonna be the clip. We should just <laughs> Rio kicks full court. Dude, I gotta get my yeah. fucking vape break in. Yeah. Don't put this in there. That's so good. <laughs> no, the mic. No, I, that's the best moment of my life, dude. I fucking agree. I super agree. I just think like it's my point is like especially for the <clears throat> for the listeners and the people that are watching is that you had this, you know, this journey. It's not like you fucking woke up, started playing making beats and then you got this place. Yeah. It's not how it works. That's the point of the show. You know what I mean? People yeah. get to watch and be like, "Holy shit, this fool went from this to this to this to this and then eventually this yeah and that's a great it's fucking incredible so like shout out to you for your perseverance and shit but also i mean having that mentality to like keep tinkering keep working on your shit really yeah. being that plays a huge role well, you know i feel like if you're too focused on the result right if you want something so bad you're so focused on it that you might not even get it. Right. Because like, I don't know, it's just important to like live day by day and just enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. And whatever comes from it is cool, but yeah. like if you don't go into stuff with these giant expectations of like, yeah, believe in yourself, I'm gonna be this someday, but right. I don't know, you also just have to enjoy the process of it. Like I was having Absolutely. so much fun just being, 15 just making beats in my bedroom for no one yeah for you <laughs> like just as much fun as now yeah i'm not even having more fun than yeah. low key because it was <laughs> so new no expectations yeah no fucking pressure like, i feel like that is the part that i enjoy and all the other shit comes but i think that's why cool shit sometimes happens for me is because i'm not i'm not just like the opportunities up there i'm just like give me give me the opportunity you know yeah. like, i'm not right desperate for it i'm just doing my You're thing doing and, shit. and shit just happens and i feel like you guys live a little more like that yeah because some people like people hit me up and it's like i want to help people but like when you're so just like give me give me give me you know like right. it's it's just not genuine then right right a hundred percent man uh we have some fucking fan questions if you want some fan questions, I do. My fans are, <laughs> my fans are some little weirdos sometimes. <laughs> no, they're fire. Shout yeah, out to I, them. I, I love my fans. We love them. Though, they're awesome. I actually have them. Uh, let's see. We picked a couple uh, that we got. Yeah. Um, all right. Is there, oh, this is cool. Is there anything else? Uh, this comes from Juan Pat R all underscore. Right. Shout out Juan. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you do to make money outside of producing? Um, I mean, I do have different <laughs> streams of income. Like, I get money off of advances for songs and royalties and sure, um, like streaming on Twitch, I guess. But like, right. I don't, I don't have other like non-music stuff. Really. Yeah, you don't have like a side hustle or like no. you sell forex and fucking Bitcoin. Uh, and or... just because I got lucky that like I was doing well off of music young enough that like right, I don't, I I never had to do that. But so many. Like, so many people do, and I really respect people. Like, if you just love music, right? like, I respect people who don't make it their job because they get to keep it as just this pure thing of, like, they love it. you, you get yeah. back home from work and you just get to, like... Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you and, just, like, when you make it your job, like, a lot of stuff comes with that. 100%. Yeah. It's, like, people that make movies versus people that love to watch movies. Yeah, like, you know? once, like, you, <laughs> once you make movies you're not gonna be able dude. to go watch a movie and enjoy it in the same way fuck no. dude making movies is so hard 
It's a fucking crazy uh, profession, you know? Like they work like 15 hour days and yeah. shit. It's, it's, and then they got to worry about editing and all that and, and how the, the ticket sales. It's a fucking, Bags. it's a business, you know? Yeah. We're the end product. So it's like, oh yeah, I'll go watch that. And then watch it, it ends in like two hours. It's like they spent their whole life yeah. for that fucking two hour movie. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, you know? Uh, all right, let's see what else we got. Yeah. We got, uh, this comes from uh, Emery, all underscore right. dot Emery, underscore. Favorite plugin? It's um, a producer ask question. I don't want to be like default. I'm going to just. <laughs> um, <laughs> default. Yeah, I want to just like give a basic answer. I really, lately, I really like this plugin, Falcon, that's made by this company, UVI. If you get all the expansions for it, which you can buy it, um, there you can find a way to get it, you know? Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. Just get all the expansions, and they have a bunch of cool sounds in there. I've, I've been using that a lot. But honestly, you don't need any plugins. You can make cool stuff. You could just, like, whistle into your phone and voice memo it and sample it, you know? It's like, <laughs> VSTs funny. are important, but, like, it's so much more about the person using the tools they're, you, they're just your tools you know how are you arranging it and shit? Yeah. yeah it's the use yeah that's a fucking great answer <laughs> this is a funny one this comes from uh, pr- uh prod produced lgn All right. lxgxn we'll put it up on the screen i don't know yeah uh how are your 808s so hard <laughs> um pause i f- I you just turn them up a bunch. <laughs> just fucking yeah. Just ramp don't them up. worry. Don't watch videos about how to mix things. Just like just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Make sure that if you're using FO, you don't have like the default limiter on. Put like a soft clipper on. But really, bro, just turn turn everything up, and don't listen to those guides where they're like, put your eight away to two dB and no do YouTube tutorial yeah. type shit. Well, I mean, I'm being a hypocrite. Like, I have YouTube tutorials, but even <laughs> then, like, don't even listen to me. Just make things and like, just do it on your own. Yeah, you're gonna because even if you do it wrong, right? You're probably gonna learn in a cool way. Right. Like some of the coolest producers I know, like, learned in like a backwards way, or like, right? They just do it in their own way. Right. They 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 found it. Yeah. On their own you just gotta like thing. let it just use your program and just use it all fucking day and you're gonna learn how to do things in whatever way you want it's fire we got one more this is from yusef b shout uh, out yusef b shout out yusef b yeah. uh what's the really oh he wrote this a little weird all okay right. what's yeah. really the meaning of having your own sound if everybody uses the same plugins that's a crazy one I think that having your own sound is really just like trusting in your own ideas. Like you don't have to create some like new genre with like a million, like new plugins and new drum sounds. You just like one, it comes from trusting in your sound and just do whatever you want and make cool shit. And right. you're going to have a sound. Don't try it. Copying people can help you learn, but don't try copy people and like put your shit out there. Yeah. Um, and also, I think that people really, the producers that we know as having their own sound, it's because they built with an artist. Like, oh, you could shit. have your own okay. sound, but like, if no one's using it, then like, no one, no normal person cares. Like, I might right. care. Right. You might know about them, but like, yeah. some random person, like, they don't know, right. they, they know about producers because of the artists they work with. And that, that's just that's like the reality point. of it. Like, for instance, look at, Benny X. Like, yeah. I've known him for a while, bro, and he's always been hella talented. Shout out Benny X, yeah. But from, you know, having the yeet shit go up a bunch, right? put a bunch of eyes on him. Right. And now he's going crazy and he's getting all these other artists on his sound. Right. When really it's that they trust him because they saw it work already with yeet. Right. It worked. So right. he can go to other people. They're going to come to him even. He doesn't even have to go to them. They're going to come to him. They saw it work. And if you don't have an artist that you blow up with, then like, why should they trust your sound? Right. You might have your own sound, but like, who cares if it doesn't, if it doesn't have hit. like a track record of right. working? Right. I it's feel like that's a, how you get your own sound. Build with artists. It's like formulaic, right? So it's like they see, oh, he's got the blueprint, mm-hmm. and they only know that the blueprint. Yeah, they're gonna go to whoever has it. Works because yeah. it's because it's worked commercially. When like he's or, been firing, he's had his own sound. Right. But it only comes out more when 
you have those eyes on you. Yeah, a hundred percent, for sure. We got a couple more for you. Let's, Let's go. Uh, <laughs> we got. Oh, this is a funny one. So this comes mm-hmm. from Sloth One. Shout out. Sloth I feel like one. I. I feel like he's DM'd me. <laughs> it's probably. Yeah. Uh, this says, "How does Rio start off the day?" Um. What's usually your- I stayed up too late. Okay. <laughs> I was probably I was probably doing some bullshit. I was staying yeah. up too late, and so I will wake up and it'll be like, ten. Okay. No, I'll wake up and it'll be nine, and I'll go back to sleep. And then and now I'll wake up at ten, and I'm gonna like lay there in bed and go on my phone and just like bullshit. Yeah, just bullshit for like an hour. Oh, okay. And then I'm gonna do my habits are terrible. <laughs> like I'm gonna just bullshit for like an hour, and then I'm gonna get up and order <laughs> Starbucks. And, okay, okay. So that's like a. You start that. Now, what's the... I have my own question. What's the Starbucks order? It depends. What's the real... But I'm going to give the people some good drinks okay. that I, I came up with. Yeah, yeah. And I, I had some help from some... Baristas. Some special friends, <laughs> yeah. you know. But, all right. Drink number one. Get a venti iced chai latte, but get vanilla cold foam, and then get one or two pumps of vanilla, Jeez. and it turns out really good. Okay. It tastes like the holidays. Damn. Or right. you could get a matcha latte, like an iced one, and get um, two pumps of raspberry and one of vanilla. Oh, shit. Turns out good. Okay. But um, I get one of those. Okay. Or I'll get like a caramel apple spice if it's cold out. It's like okay. apple juice. They put caramel syrup in it. And yeah. It's like. It's a hot one. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like, you know, when you get apple cider out of like. The big apple cider thing. Yeah. You ever been to an apple festival? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You have? That type shit. Yeah. yeah. It's like some apple festival shit. Like you, if you close your eyes and drink it, you're at a like you're apple at a festival. Yeah. Where like they got all the different kinds of apples. You have to like try them. That's sick. That's some Portland shit. I love that. I fucking love that. Yeah. Um, You got, there's more here. So we got one. This is, uh, this comes from JSE Joseph 74. All right, Joseph. All right. Is what? he 74? <laughs> Joseph, let us know. Uh, it says, what is the best way <laughs> to start? Oh, this is dope. This ties into what we were talking about it earlier. Does. It does. What is the best way to send out beats and loops? Like, obviously, yeah. no sending 50 DMs. We said that. Okay. So, you have to find people who, like, like don't DM Metro Boomin when you have, like, one follower. <laughs> like, he's probably not going to read it. He's going to be I probably out. wouldn't read it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you have to work your way up. Like you're right, right here, find people who are like at your level or a little above and hit them up. You know, you have a thousand followers. Hit up people who have like three thousand followers. Right. And you just have to work your way up because it might seem really daunting. You're like, why does no one like me? No one will use my shit. They're not responding. <laughs> right. The but rejection. You're just hitting up people who have a million people in their DMs. Right. And yeah, you just have to work with people who are smaller. And then if you work with people who are fire and smaller, they're going to blow up. And then you're going to blow up off of that. And yeah, you got to find right. people who don't hit people who you got to think smarter. If everyone's DMing them, they probably won't respond. Facts. Uh, this one comes from Braden from PA. Okay. He said, is that his username or is it like, <laughs> that's his username. Okay. Braden from PA. Oh, shout yeah. out. <laughs> it says how slash where do you find people who are passionate about making music, not followers and money. Just wrote and money. Um, there are always people out there like that. I, I feel like it's two things. So if you live somewhere and it's like rural or there aren't a lot of music people, it yeah. can be tough because it's hard to like network and work with people when right. like everyone is on some bullshit. Right. That sucks. Right. You got to keep looking and maybe you'll find people. You can probably find them online. Even though, like, it's hard finding people in person who have the same passion for stuff. Right. Um, but if we're talking about networking, if they're like, I'm DMing people and all they care about is money, they won't, you know, like, they won't work with me. Right. Then it's just the answer to the last one where it's like, you just got to hit up people who are at a similar point to you. Right. Or a little ahead because they're more likely to respond. Right. And go on SoundCloud, go through random people's likes. And then go through that person's likes and just go on, go down a rabbit hole of SoundCloud until you find some random artist who has like two plays, but you think is fire. Yeah. And like, they're going to be down to work with you. Of course. You just have to put in that effort. Cause it's like, you have to realize, like we were saying, there's a million producers. Yeah. So like you have to come up with some way to do shit smarter to find people. 
Because like that's a good there are one. a million kids who are doing the exact same thing as you. Right. So it's like work smarter, not harder type thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love well, that. you got to do both. You got to work hard and smart. Yeah. But you got to make sure you're being thoughtful with how you're reaching out to people. Mm-hmm. And like, and don't be a bot. Don't be like, don't be a bot. That's a fucking good one. Like I be a bot. I like when people DM me and they like genuinely seem cool. Right. I respond like, yeah, as much as I can. You're like, I don't like half of the chill people. Right. Which is a lot. Cause like people be spamming me. That's so (laughs) shout out to the spammers. I I love all of them. (laughs) I remember being like a little tiny producer. Right. And DMing all these producers. (laughs) And so I can never get mad about it because right. one of those kids in my DMs is going to be right here. Yeah. You know, they could be here one day. You never like, know. That's why I do all the YouTube shit where I try to help people out and like make videos helping people. Cause like, yeah, I was a random kid and I watched a video Nick did. Yeah. And now I work with him and I'm friends with him. Right. So if I pay it forward, then there's going to be some kid who watches my video who then Gets I'm going to inspired work with. and works with you. Yeah. So that's, that's a like good, the cycle. That's a good, um, that's something good to kind of circle back to is like you get these placements, you're doing shit, obviously you're making music and you got the YouTube going on. Mm-hmm. So like, how did you like, at what point did you start doing that? You know, I remember when, when I was first starting producing, I made a YouTube and I made tutorials that were like, I was just making like meme tutorials that were like purposely <laughs> weird and not like <laughs> shitty, but it's kind like, of funny. Kind of like this dude, Based Gutta, who does, he did Shout that out for a long time. Yeah. yeah, he's fire. Um, but I started taking it more seriously, like, I think it was a little less than a year ago. Okay. Um, Because I already had, like, enough of a following that I was like, shit, we'll carry over. Yeah. And I've been hella consistent with it lately. It's yeah. nice. I, I just enjoy getting to, like, feel like I have... Like, I, I do do vlogs, and I'll, I'll do stuff where it's, like, not as helpful. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, use my life, whatever. But I really enjoy the part of it where, like, even if I make, like, that much of a difference in in someone's life, you it's know? A, yeah. I make videos where I just rant about music shit. Like, I <laughs> yeah, did one, right, like, a right. week ago where I was just talking about, like, how easy it is to get unmotivated and, right. like, how to not overthink. And, like, I know that all creative people, like, deal with that. Right. So. I just, if I help like one person out there, then it's worth it. Cause I lose money on YouTube. I have right. editors and then I get ad revenue and then the ad revenue isn't as much as the editors. <laughs> Even though I have like 35 K subs, dude. <laughs> That's crazy. But it's worth it. Yeah. I love it, making videos. Cause it, when yeah. I was little, I wanted to be a YouTuber. Oh, that like makes I had so a little sense. era where I was like, yeah. And I, I did like Instagram meme pages too. Oh shit. Like I was on some like content shit. That's a crazy, that's a deep cut. That's yeah. crazy. That's like a low key fact. That's crazy. So you were doing that back then. Yeah. On my iPod. That's funny. Yeah. On the, on the iPod. And then my mom found it and I had a meme oh, page no. where I was posting like accidentally fucked up stuff. And then she took my iPod. <laughs> oh, no. Dude. Cause you remember like probably like what, like six or seven years ago. There was yeah. a hell of me. People be posting memes about oh, memes anything. Was huge. Yeah. People made a bunch of, there's an artist we talked to, um, I forgot it. Oh, it was Cash. This dude, Cash. Mm-hmm. He uh, he got famous off of fucking making memes. Yeah. He was getting paid to make memes at exactly. one point. It's fucking nuts. And he's like a legit artist, but he also, that was his side shit. Yeah. He fucking made memes for money. Any way you can get your foot in the door. Yeah. Like people, people can get sad and mad all they want about not being where they want. But like, there's so much that you could do. Like, don't just look at the path other people took. Like, Right. The most fire people, they paid attention to what successful people do, but they also have to like make their own path in a way, right. you know, right. like even if it's just some gimmick, you know, like doing some social media shit. I see people on TikTok where they're like <laughs> really smart about marketing their beats. Right. You know, they'll like come up with memes to go with them and like just whatever you can do, like you got to come up with something unique and fire. Cause if you're not doing that, like i you can't even feel that bad if you don't get where you want to be because there's more you could be doing. And you're not doing anything original. Yeah. You're just kind of biting shit to see what sticks. Yeah, my meme page was, I wasn't funny. Was fire. Dude, I wasn't funny. Dude, I would love to see some if you have them. I don't. Damn. They're all gone. They're if you find gone. them, just send them to us. I will. I'll look at them. I got you. <laughs> yeah. I won't share them with anybody. Okay. But I just want, now that I've yeah. gotten to know you, I want to see... Like what, what was going on in like yeah, 11 year old Rio's brain? 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, can we let everyone know? You know what you got coming soon. Do you have anything you sure, want? Sure. Yeah. Anything you want to plug for the? I, I got the, you. Sure. The folks. Um, I'm I'm gonna put out an album on June 12th for my birthday. June 12th. Yeah, cause I. Fuck yeah. Just in my free time, I end up making like so much shit. Yeah, yeah I, I end up making a bunch of shit. You know, some of it has my vocals. Those ones are kind of shitty, but that'll be hard. That's yeah, cool. no, but I, I do make songs sometimes, and it's just it's for me. It's yeah. just fun, and like I get home, and like just in the way we were saying, if you get home from your job you make beats like yeah i get home from my job i'm not gonna make beats yeah. <laughs> anymore like i can't I, i'll go make songs you'll and do shit, something so. else yeah yeah i'm gonna put out an album because that's my birthday so i'll put out an album Fuck for yeah. my birthday and june 12th there you go yeah do you have a do you have a name for it yet or no uh not yet though i'll figure it out you i should, got time. you should call it like full court kickball some shit like that. That'd be a hard if I made like a fully shot. like if I made like a fully indie album. Yeah. I got some indie shit. I feel like that would be the name of like an indie oh, band. Hell yeah, full court kickball. Yeah, or like the kickball shot or some shit. Yeah, damn, that's crazy. That's a band dude. somewhere in a different. That universe. has to be yeah, has to be a band. That's yeah. fucking sick, dude. I want to be in a band. <laughs> that would be hard as like a next iteration. Yeah, you know, like eventually you're just in a band. <laughs> that would be crazy. Thanks. Um, well, we snapped. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent, man. You killed it. Crazy. I try. I, I had my whole water. I think you didn't it. do as good. You gotta stay no, I'm, hydrated. I'm still man. working on it. Yeah. Um. So just to keep people tapped in with you, best place is Instagram. Yeah, I, I'd say Instagram. Instagram? Yeah. My Instagram is just Rio Leva. It's just my Rio name. Rio Leva. L E Y V A. Yeah, you Rio, did it. Rio Leva. He did it. Dog. Rio. <laughs> thank you so much for tapping in with of us. Of course. Man. Thank we you. Super appreciate you. Uh, we got a freaking gift for you. Oh my god! <laughs> this is uh, a gift. Crazy exclusive. It's Christmas and my birthday all at once. <laughs> crazy Dude. exclusive. Yep, he's got the tapped in Carhartt exclusive. He's already rocking it. It's nuts. Yep, this is how I'm rocking it. <laughs> there you go, man. Rio again. You guys are tapped in. Tapped in officially. Thank you guys for tapping in with us. Subscribe. Hit the bell. We're tapping out. Yep. <laughs>